G'day and welcome to another episode of the Supercoach Page Show. I'm Paige. I'm Matt, and uh, introducing two of the writers on the SCP website, Henry and Josh. Just tell us a bit about what you do on the website there. Hey, I'm Henry, and I write the Rookie, Way- Rookie Rage Weekly article. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm Josh, I do a lot of strategy and trading articles on the website. Cool, well good to have you on the show. Uh, how'd you do over the weekend? Oh, I'd rather not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> uh, I got 14.10, yeah. uh, and that was due to my four donuts, which yeah. I'm not too happy about. Pretty bad this round. How about you, Henry? <laughs> well, I was stoked because I was playing Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I scored 16.80, and I had 19 players, but oh, with good. Birchall oh, and heavy. Pittard and Hanley. And, yeah. Yeah. Well, I be, I'm just going to roll it off here. I had 15.61, which is fantastic because... You and I are not the worst coaches of this week. Nope. Damon's not here today because he's too bloody embarrassed. So that's five losses for him now. Yep. Clearly leading the race here. Mm. So it's yeah, you've a... got a 14.38, yeah, which good. is disgraceful. Yeah, good. So when you're here next week, Damon... You're going to cop it. You are going to get it bad. And uh, I got 19.05, so very good for me. I'm just going to say that for uh, myself. And, and I thought, and you know, now... For those of you who did watch the show last week, and you should be because it's a great show, you would have probably noticed that the uh, the Geelong jumper <laughs> fell off the wall, a bit like what happened to Geelong <laughs> at half time on the weekend. So um, just to celebrate that, what have you got for us, Henry? Oh, Henry's brought, just brought come on. Oh, look at Beautiful. that. Tommy Rockcliffe. Tommy Rockcliffe. Oh, we love him. He's in my super coach site. All right, let's whack that on the table. Let's get a bit more Brisbane colour here. There and go. Just put it right in the middle. There, there we go. Fantastic. So our producer can <laughs> not over the Collingwood you? No, no, it's fine. What do you I'm think fine. this is? Bloody. I'm just gonna read. Look, there we go. Anyway, our producer will enjoy that because he's a mad cats fan. So suck on that. Thanks for making us have that disgusting jumper sit behind us the entire year. Yep. You've copped it. That's fantastic. Let's just move on to the first segment, hey? Yeah. Enough about round 13. Let's go on to round 14. I know. We're finally over the buyers, which is fantastic. Mm. But talking point of the week now, it is the backline dilemma. We've been hit with injuries and everything this week. Now mm. there's been virtual this afternoon, gone for four to six weeks with a PCL injury, which sucks. Mm. Um, and then we've also got Nick Floston, who spent the last 16 minutes on the sidelines on the weekend against uh, Bulldogs, wasn't Bulldogs, it? Yeah. Yeah. Bulldogs. And Brett Goods as well is probably going to miss this week too with a wrist injury. And mm. when you throw in that you've got a couple of underperforming premiums at the moment, and uh, we'll it's, it's chaos. Those, yeah. It's yeah. chaos. Mm. And I mean, it's really bad for those people that had virtual that traded him in right before he had that crap patch. Mm, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was who, who did that? Did you do that? You did that because you admitted to that before. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a bit of bad karma. Yeah, that so really sucks. Some people are calling this the fourth buy. The, because it is. It, you know what? It's probably a good just... way to put it. But. Look, let's jump into it. Um, uh, Henry, you and I were discussing uh, Nick Floston and Brett Goods. Let's kick things off with uh, Floston. Now, the season low score on the weekend with, with just 31 points. Yep. You know, average bef- before then was 90, now it's dropped to 80 odd. Mm. Um, what else we got? Yeah, Richmond, you know, we've got a really good run home to finals, though, which is the positive side to that. Yep. Um, yeah. And obviously, maybe keeping for him because we've got coming up North Melbourne, St Kilda, and Gold Coast, but then they've got. Sydney, uh, Hawthorne, Hawthorne yeah. and who else? Carlton, Carlton. Fremantle, Essendon. Yeah. Yeah, so, so do you reckon there's almost a bit of worth keeping for a bit and then offloading him? Yeah, I think if he plays this week, he's definitely a good um, good to keep in your side, especially with Virtual going down injured. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, you yeah. might need him for the coverage there because yeah. you don't have that um, four worst scores don't count or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. It's not an actual buy round. Exactly. So it's an buy round. His scoring was a little bit uh, erratic um, recently. Uh, 87, 108, 79, 31, which has been his last month. So mm, yeah. perhaps maybe now is just the kicker to sort of move him on. Yeah. That might be the uh, the way of looking at it. Or it just might be a knee-jerk reaction there. But mm. Brett Goods, what can you tell us about him? Um, reports have come through that he might have a wrist injury this mm. week, which could leave him out of the side. Yeah. Um, after I think he, he played on Jakey King. He did. Well, Jakey <laughs> King played on him. It was yeah, good push, up. push up. Cop, yep. Copped a tag from Jakey King, which mm. saw his lowest score for the year of 61. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, he'd been scoring solidly, averaged 88 uh, over the season. Mm. And his job security is just immense in a young Bulldogs mm. outfit. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Especially coming off the back line. He's been so important for them uh, coming out of defence this year and, and has been their number one go-to guy coming out of the rebound 50 there. But, I mean, the doggies have got Melbourne GWS and Essendon coming up. 
Um, and then they get hit with Hawthorne, West Coast, Sydney and Carlton. So um, there might be, but I've considered him to be a keeper. What do you guys think? Oh, I, I traded him a while ago. I Did mean, you? Yeah. Did you trade goods out a bit? He didn't keep, you kept that one for quiet for a bit. <laughs> It's been out of my team for a while. Oh, but the thing is, like, even if they come up against teams like Hawthorne and West Coast and Sydney and Carlton, who are really good scorers, mm. he's a defender. So that just means the ball's going to be, be back down there, there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it's not just, you know, Melbourne GWS, they're mm. going to hack the ball in and he's going to get easy yep. touches. But, you know, it's just going to be in the back line a lot more often. Well, I mean, just to rebut that anyway, his scoring of late has been pretty good. Like, it's been very yeah. consistent. So 86 90. And 96, and then before 61 on the weekend. So mm. that's his lowest score of the year too. So I would say that if you're looking to trade either of them, it might be Flosten for mine that might get yeah. the flick before yeah, Goods. Yeah. Um, probably Goods, older body, mature player, more prone to you know being able to run out games easier. And mm. Flosten, I mean, as good as he's been, this injury might we'll see. might give him the rest. Yeah. But we'll, we'll find out later in the week when the teams are in. But yeah. what have you got for us? Um, Who else is on the radar? On the radar to bring in, you think? On the radar to bring in. Yeah. Um, Basha Hooley, he was best on ground on the weekend for mine. Um, he's averaging 96.5, um, and he's got a really good run, as we were saying, in the next few games. Um, 487, 400 price at. So, quite good for Bash. He's, I'm not he's sure really bobbed up on the radar. Mm, I mean, he's. I think Delidio moving back has really helped him. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you can't keep the tension to both of them. That's it. Um, <laughs> And, I mean, he's ranked 11 in the competition for rebound 50s and 15th for effective disposals. And That's he's really such good. a good kick. Yeah. Like, metres gained is, you know, really good What's for What's what that. you want in Supercoach? You want efficiency and you want someone to kick the ball long? Mm. That's more yeah. points. Yeah, he, he's got a similar game plan to Pierce Hanley where he can... He just knows where to run and he runs all day. And he's not the type of player either that's probably going to get a, a bit of a attention off half back. So mm, the yeah. teams aren't really going to be... Especially with Deledio and Cochin yeah. in the midfield. You yeah. see what Deledio does when he's not tagged. It's yeah, exactly. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I don't think teams are really going to spend too much time sending defensive forwards to them either. To, mm, or no. to, to bash our own in general. But who have you got for us? Um, I've got Heath Shaw. Granted, he is a bit expensive, but... He's been averaging 107, so at 557k, you've got to get him into your side if you don't already have him. Um, he's been pushing up to the wing, and he's got he kicks the ball more than handball, so that's obviously what you want. Um, big Always tick good. there. Yeah. yeah. And Collingwood's upcoming run. Port Adelaide, Carlton, Adelaide, Gold Coast, GWS. It's I mean, not bad. It's not a bad run, there. I'll take that. Yeah, and he's also, I mean, he's ranked number one in the AFL for for bouncers, so I mean, that just tells you how much that he just runs and carries, mm. and that too brings with it a lot of points. So yeah, that's... you do get points for handball received, so yep. he's sure. He's the sort of give and that. get, doesn't yeah, he? But so. um, and even then, when when he plays, we saw on the weekend, well, sorry, not the weekend, the weekend before when Kong played the Bulldogs, that he he does take a lot of defensive marks, especially mm. against the sloppier side. So that experience, when he takes those defensive marks. It's like eight or nine points just for a big defensive grab. Yeah. So it's like Jakey Carlisle. Yeah, exactly. So a couple of weeks <laughs> look at you just rub, giving the opportunity to rub it in. That's why that's why Dave is not Dave here. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> but look, uh, me myself now, I've decided to speak about Gary Ibbotson as a really good replacement for anyone of the three guys we spoke about. Now, at four ninety six K he's got an average of hundred and three, which might have surprised a few. It did for me. Uh in the next four games, um, Fremantle have actually got a really good run coming up, so the month mm. ahead's fantastic. But he's he's asserted himself now as a must-have defender. Um, he's the number one um, sort of user off half back for Fremantle, mm -hmm. um, and given how good Fremantle's defensive fifty is, yeah. and he he leads that from defence. So he's a fantastic option. And a couple of stats just to throw out there: he's ranked third in the AFL for marks per game, so he's averaging nine point six grabs, which is fantastic. He's ranked seventh in the comp for percentage of time spent on ground. He's spending 90%, 97% sorry, of the game on the ground, which mm -hmm. is fantastic as well. And he's ranked ninth in the, uh, in the competition for kicks per game. So he's having 17 kicks per game. So that tells you that he's yeah. preferring to, to, to kick it long mm -hmm. rather than handball it off to running options. So really lucrative point scoring there. And at 496k, I think he's, he's 60,000 less than... Shorey off the yeah. top of my head. So yeah. if you're going to weigh that up there, that might be something to look into if you're looking to save a bit of cash. I told you to bring him in a few weeks. You did, <laughs> and you didn't uh, I'm probably, I didn't listen. <laughs> um, and he's probably someone I'm going to look at very strongly bringing in this week. Yeah, and last but not least. Yeah, I've got uh, Trent McKenzie. The he's, cannon. <laughs> he's really, po really popped up with a good average of 97.2. Mm -hmm. And 
he's 90k cheaper than he's sure. He averaged yeah. his next four games against Adelaide, Brisbane, Richmond, and Collingwood. So there'll be some good close games mm. and in form Gold Coast. And even, you know, as you said before, defenders, if the ball's down there, they're yeah, going to exactly. get kicks. Exactly. Yeah, the thing I'm not sure about with McKenzie, though, he hasn't really been tagged. He's been probably Gold Coast's most dangerous defender. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Rebounding off the half back. So maybe he might get a tag once teams. That's it. I think it might be even more interesting now too because Gold Coast are looking, and we're going to get jump into it later. But their run home is looking very good, so a couple of teams might be a bit wary of that and might send a bit of attention to McKenzie's one, I reckon. Yeah. But yeah. I still think at this point in time, he is a great point of difference. Could do. Yeah. Really good option. Um, now there are a lot of well, there are a few players, sorry, that have really <laughs> bottomed out in price, and you're not going to get them much cheaper than they already yeah. are. Rock um, bottom. Rock bottom. Uh, myself, and Josh will be, be, uh, myself and Josh will be having a chat about them. Uh, Hamish Hartlett and Pierce Handley. Um, tell us a bit about Hartlett. Um, so Hartlett, he's got an average of 89, but he hasn't scored 100 since round five, which was Ooh. ever since everyone jumped on him. I had him from the start of the season. So, <laughs> <laughs> so have you still I'm, got him? I've still got him. So you've been riding the roller coaster yeah. that is Hamish Hartlett. <laughs> yeah. um, his next four are Collingwood, Essendon, Hawthorne and St Kilda. Yep. So he's been, he's been playing a different role though. He's sort of been rolling between half forward, the midfield, to a wing, and then has sort of spent time in defence. So he's sort of been all over the yeah. place at the moment. Mm. So he was scoring really well when he was in coming out of the back half. But I don't know, Jasper, Jasper Pittard on the weekend finally mm. came back. But yep. maybe that might have something to do with it. Cause since Jasper Pittard went down, mm. he's moved up, up the ground. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm thinking, like he plays Collingwood and you'd think... In past years, you know, McCaffrey plays that more forward role. Yep. He might yeah. get him, but he's been playing more in the midfield, McCaffrey, mm. with the defensive role. So that tagging yeah. sort of maybe role, yeah. Hartlett will get free. Who knows? Yeah, that'd um, be interesting. And Pierce Hanley as well, another person who really just knows where to run, and it's really dependent yeah. on yep. if the opponent plays really well on him, then he'll have a bad game. But if yeah. he's left to run, he will not have a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> um, big break, even though um, one thirty-one. He's dropped over a hundred thousand. So if you want to get him, now's the time to do uh, it. Even, even next week, it'd be pretty good. Mm, I mean, I'm tempted with, uh, this week, but I think after bringing Sam Mitchell in with a bigger break even, I'm, gonna, I'm a little bit gun shy now. Yeah, maybe. And, and you've got uh, Ibbotson that you could bring in this week. Or, yep. Um, a few others that we talk about uh, a bit later on in the show as That's well. That's it, yep. Um, yeah, he's tagged out of the game. Uh, 92 the week after um, against Fremantle. So he had a, a pretty decent score in recent times, although he did have a, a bit of a down score. But he was yep. co- whacked in the head by <laughs> Steve Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He copped it. He copped it now and now the... Bit of karma yeah. for, uh, for our producer. Who's shaking yeah, his head at take the that. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's actually challenging his uh, suspension at the tribunal, Stevie J. He, is. Um, he can't get worse than two games, but it'll give him more carryover points if he's not yeah. successful yeah. there. So... Um, if he gets off, I'll be stoked because it sort of just lessens the uh, the count. Like, yeah, I don't have Stevie. Yeah, I don't oh, have yeah. him either. So you no, don't, don't have him? Have so him. I'm the only one who's got him. Stevie J, please. Please, may the gods be with you. Get off. I need you. Yeah. Um, and Hanley again, our next four games, Hawthorne, Gold Coast, North Melbourne and Melbourne. So pretty decent run, I'd have to say. Um, they don't really like having those forward tags, any of those teams, other than maybe Torpolo at Hawthorne. Um, but... I, I'm liking Hanley. Yeah, I like him. I think for me, he's probably someone I'm going to bring in next week. Um, that low break even, I'd expect him to be to drop another. Well, he's expected to drop another 25k this week or something mm. around that. So yeah. that just brings it down a little bit more for me. So could be more. I mean, I'm just going to throw this out here anyway. I'm contemplating going Goods and Floston to to uh, Shaw and Ibbotson this week. Mm. When carrying over Birchall might be worth it because by then it might only be about 40 grand difference getting uh, getting one from, from Hanley to, uh, to Birch. Well, so. you, you do that. Oh, sorry, the other way around, virtual to uh, Hanley. <laughs> you do that and you see how that works out for you. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. It's, just, it's a good option. Birch, yeah. Holding Birch over for a week is not going to kill you, especially if he's going for four to six. Mm, Who yeah. knows? It could be a Lewenberger thing. It might be Brisbane lying to us again. Yeah. He might be back in two weeks. Maloney was supposed to be out for a while as well and he played again and yeah. actually played really well. I don't really believe well. you, Michael yeah. Voss, and I don't like you. Yeah. I haven't liked you since 2002 and I don't like you now. So. Yeah. And now we play the week. Game. The waiting game. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Waiting game sucks. Let's play Hungry Hungry Hippos. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, look, the waiting game anyway, we're, we're eagerly awaiting all of our cash cows to keep going up because there's a really good crop of them at the moment that are really starting to bob up in price. And and also the flip side of that is is that we're also waiting for some premiums to really come down in price. So it's almost, we're almost reaching that 
that area where they can almost be direct swaps straight over. So mm. we're going to go through a few. Henry, who have you got for us? I've got Joey Danaher. He's on the bubble this week coming off the buy mm -hmm. and break even of negative 59. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty good. So and cash earner. Tommy Mitchell from Sydney, break even of negative 80. I think he went up about 100k on yeah, the weekend. Got, yeah, he's got 80 something on the weekend, I think. 89. Yeah. 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 Um, and Danaher was only priced about 150. So he's a rookie, but he's an expensive rookie. He was yeah, picked 10 in the draft. Right. So yeah. um, it really depends on whether they're going to keep playing him. So maybe you just have to wait until the team sheets well, come out. Yeah, to... Herb said that he tempted to play Ryder and Bell Chambers and Danaher mm. if Hurley doesn't pull up. Yeah. So And you've still got Gumbleton there yeah. as an option. So Well, Bell, Bell Chambers just destroyed the VFL. Didn't he? Had he was best on ground in the VFL on the weekend. Yeah, so um, it, that so. could be interesting. But <laughs> for me now, obviously, a lot of people have jumped on these two boys. Um, Kyle Martin, we'll start with him. Minus 43. So if you've got him, hold on to him for a while because he's going to keep going up and up and up in price. Mm. Um, and ditto that now Ben Kennedy... Um, there's been a bit of whispers that he might not play this week. So uh, for those of you looking for forward coverage, um, if you're relying on Kennedy, that might be a problem. Now the word is, is that they might give him a bit of a rest because he's played the last five or six weeks or something like that. But I also think they will play him more so because Collingwood are travelling over to SA and he's an Adelaide boy, he's at hometown. So I think Collingwood will take him over to give him that opportunity to play in front of his family. So. If you're fretting about that, just look at that. Take that, that side of it. Um, they just had the buy, so surely that's <laughs> enough oh, rest well, for him. You know and he's what? played as a sub as well. Yeah, weeks, so. but I mean, the good thing is he's still got a break even of, of uh, 14, so mm, he's still yeah. got a bit more room to go, and then you can cash him in and yeah. um, take the money. Yeah, yeah. So harden up, Ben Kennedy. Harden up, BK. <laughs> yeah. uh, how about uh, you, Josh? Um, so I've got Tommy Nichols, he's the Gold Coast Rockman, played three games. He's got a break even of negative 83. So he's <laughs> obviously got a fair bit to go up. Before you're Definitely. Up he's going to be 400k. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a Brisbane forward as well, Brent Staker. How about yeah, him? Brent Staker. Um, he's got the break even of 23. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so he scored an 85 on the weekend. So he's yeah. still got a bit of room to go up at 265k. Yeah, yeah. so he's doing quite well as a, as a backup there. A lot of people had to bring him in for the yep. uh, bye weekend that's just passed. Um, I'm going to talk about a few Cats boys, uh, Blitzarves and Thurlow. Um, Blitzarves is a, has a break even of 17 and he's really getting up there. I mean, he's got yeah. he's scored 90 -ish? 93. 93 on the weekend. Yep. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. You never expected I'm just going to point the out, the, the three times I've used him on field this year, he got 116, 106, and now 93, so... Very, very happy thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm very, very happy, mm. considering I haven't got a second premium Rutland. Yeah. So, um, he's I've doing... He's Sam soon. Jacobs, so I don't know. Okay, yeah. you, can keep, you can keep Jacobs, and I'll keep Litzars. And uh, Jackson Thurlow as well, breaking with 25. They keep bringing him in and out of the team, and I hate it, because you've, you've yeah, got it's such killing me great too. defenders in Harry Taylor and Tom Lonergan and yep. Mackie and that sort of thing. But I reckon after that terrible loss... Mm. Um, I reckon they're going to bring in Thurlo this week. Hope I think so. I think the axe may just uh, go. He's been playing, playing on the on the wing in the VFL. I think yeah. uh, Thurlo. So yeah. maybe... have you guys got him in your team as well? No, unfortunately, no. yes. No, he's <laughs> sitting withering away. On At the least bench. you don't have Saunders. So. At least you don't have Josh Saunders. <laughs> oh, damn Saunders. <laughs> um, now coming down in price as well. Uh, we were speaking about uh, Pierce Hanley before. What was his break even again? Uh, 131. 131. Yeah. 131. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Jesus. And uh, <laughs> Jimmy Bartell, another cat, uh, 138 break even, expected to drop 10k in price, but he's just been Ooh. so consistent mm. um, all throughout the year. He was probably one of the cat's best players on the I day. I wouldn't even look at that yeah. break even. If you've got a spare spot open in your forward line, I just would not even bother. Yeah. Don't wait for him to come down, bring him in. We love you can, you can definitely count on him. <laughs> but I mean, look, I'm going to go for the big man, the milkman. Will Minson, uh, break even of 154, um, expected to drop 20k. So he's on the radar for people like myself looking for other Ruckman. Yeah, Thank you. copying it ever since. <laughs> We're just, just <laughs> devoting this entire episode to copying out, copying out Damon and mm. our producer. It's fantastic. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, JPK as well. Yeah, I've got him. He's got a break even of 134 this week. Expected to drop 15k, but. You never know, he could score 140, 150 yeah, you're not wrong in there. price. So. Yeah. It's, it's really a bit, he's very erratic with his <laughs> yeah, scoring, I, I hate it. But at his best, he's just awesome. Yeah. Yep. And uh, a few more players to get while they're cheap. We were speaking about uh, Backman to get while they're bottoming out, mm -hmm. but just all around the ground. Sammy Mitchell, I've had him since the start of the year. Yep. He had a bit of a poor game on the weekend, which was unexpected. Um, yeah. 76. And I bought him in as well. <laughs> 
Thanks. <laughs> um, break even at one thirteen. Price below five hundred k. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Good to get him. Uh, Nick Nat. Yep, Nick Nat. Uh, he's got a break even of one thirty three, but. I'm backing him to get 150 this way. Mm. Ooh, he's plummeted in price, I think. I mean, he's he was 608, I think, from mm. memory. Yeah. I think, yeah, he's, at, he's only at 568 now. So. Mm. Yep. So it's, it's very good. Relatively cheap. Yeah. 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 And uh, Jolly Selwood? Yeah, he's got a break even of 39 this week, so he's priced at 475,000. That is cheap. So that's get him in. Good. <laughs> yeah. He had if a massive room. game, he had like 130 odd on the weekend, mm. too. So, yeah. look, I've got uh, Dustin Martin, a bit of a super coach. Favourite here at SCP. Um, break even of 81 this week. You know, he had a good, what did he score last week? Uh, 90-ish, I think. 90-ish, so that's about par for, for Dusty. But at 498k now, now he was almost push, pushing high 500. So yeah. uh, 498, uh, sub 500, If you, you've got to get him in. Yeah, he's definitely. fantastic. He's probably been one of Richmond's most consistent players I'd this say, year. Yep. Yep. So very good option there. And uh, just speaking about Joel Selwood, he probably lost along the game on the weekend. Uh, just with that quick play on that he did. Woo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're just going to speak quickly about the run home for uh, four clubs. The run home. Yeah. We've been we've been pestered with this all over the uh, Facebook and Twitter page about which clubs have got easier run home, so people can take that into account when they're trading in. But yep. Gold Coast. Yep, the Gold Coast. Suns, what have we got? They've got. I reckon they've got the easiest run home there mm-hmm. for Supercoach finals. They've got Port Adelaide, St Kilda, Melbourne, and GWS. What? And so you, de- you, you get might even take a look at them. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and if they snap for a couple of wins during the season, they could be looking at finals. Yeah, yeah. So, definitely. Um, you've obviously got Gary Ablett. He should absolutely monster the opposition there. Mm, and Trevor McKenzie before. Yep. We were talking about him. The cannon. <laughs> yep. cannon, definitely. And they, they don't really travel that often either. No, they're only mm. travelling three times. And mm. so we've got the seven games in... Queensland, including the one in Cairns. Which yep. are you worried about that, Matt? <laughs> no. <laughs> no Ooh, not provoke the fear. Was it worth the five hundred thousand to lose to him? It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last year of it, so it's fine. Uh, Frio as well. They've got a quite easy run home. Yeah. Um, Barlow, Wibbitson, Monday, and Fife. Are, you know, really good players. Fife was a lot yeah. better on the weekend. Yeah, Barlow yeah. was sensational. Fife could kick. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mark as well. <laughs> uh, six games with Patterson Stadium. Team. They travel five times, but they play a lot of games against the really weak sides. Yeah. Um, so they're a strong chance to even be top two at the end of the year. Just I'd with back them in easily. Mm. Yep. Um, look, I'm going and speak about now Geelong. Now, obviously, the key players there being Stevie J, Salwood, Bartel, those sorts of guys. They've got three games coming up against top six sides. Um, they've got also three games against those ranked between seventh and twelfth. Uh, and what I really like is they've got four games against those ranked thirteenth to eighteenth. So they've got a bit of an easy kill coming up too. Mm-hmm. They only travel twice in the second half of the year. And what I love about Geelong, and this is where it might sort of jump in for a few people, they've got six games at Cadinia Park, including the last two games of the year. So that's your prelim and your grand final. So if you're looking at that, I would definitely be backing in Geelong players. Yeah, what I, don't like about it, well, what I don't like about Geelong is they tend to rest lots of their players. Like... Uh, Joel Selwood, Stevie J, they could easily be rested against those weeks. They sides. could. They've yeah. got the uh, dad's army out there as well. Mm. So they've got a few older players. So it wouldn't surprise me, like you said, to see him rest a few. But... It really depends on what the run towards the finals is like. I mean, if it's a top two spot up for grabs, then they're going to have yeah. to play these players if they're yeah. going to you know, really Definitely. secure that and prevent Fremantle. And they, they did, Geelong, we saw last year that they did back off towards the end of the season last year. Mm. Yeah. Rested a few people. And it ended up as they came into the finals, they got done by Fremantle in, yeah. in the first round. So, oh, wow, we're just giving it to Geelong today, aren't we? <laughs> Woohoo! Jeez, that's fun. And uh, last but often. not least, yeah, I've got Essendon. They, their Supercoach finals is a pretty tough run. They come up against Richmond in there, Collingwood, and Carlton. Wow. And so there's some really big games, mm. but if. They get a couple of wins in there, you know, guys like Joe Watson, Goddard, Heppel, they're going to score really big in close games. Yep. That's the thing, Watson tends to really step up with the clutch games. Richmond would know. Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he always seems to score like 140 against Richmond. Yeah. So. Good thing Supercoach takes leadership into yeah. account. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, what a cop out. They won't have any points at the end of the year. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've, they've got a reasonably easy run. Just tell us about the sorts of uh, teams that they play. Yeah, so they come up against two, two of the top six sides. They've got two games against West Coast, and one of them in 
Patterson's on Thursday night mm-hmm. and then back at Eddie Had. They got five games against teams ranked seventh to twelfth. And they could if they lose a couple of them, they could drop to that sort of area and have mm. a pretty tough run mm. going to finals. Yeah, that's a good point. So. Definitely. Well, we've got. It's that time again. It's that time again. It's the Mint Tours Tweet of the Week. We should get like a. Um, something stupid like that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just get the Brisbane theme song. I don't know. It'll work. Um, Be sure to tweet us in uh, every week with the SCP Show hashtag to make sure that uh, your questions are answered. That's it. Um, we'll do our best to answer the best ones on the show. That's it. Um, what have we got for us, Matthew? This week is Christopher Pun asking. Is it a good idea to trade Carnesis out for Danaher and then Omira to Kieran Jack? What are you still doing with Carnesis? <laughs> is my question. He's, you should have traded him out in week three or yep. you know, early in the season. No, that's all right. We're here to help. <laughs> There's a line. <laughs> where you can... We're here to help. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, if you were to trade him out for a forward Danaher, I suppose, if you've got you know, all of your premiums in there already. If not, you could bring in, you know, a player like Dustin Martin or Jimmy Bartell um, and maybe bring in a, a rookie midfielder like uh, Lockie Hunter. He was quite well Lockie good Hunter on the weekend. Lockie Hunter looks pretty good, yeah. yeah. Um, but if you were wanting to trade in a, a mid that was a premium, Joel Sell was another option other than Kieran Jack. But Jack's yeah. a great option as well. Now I've got uh, Sam Ru- Russell. He asks, uh, is Ibbotson the real deal? Need a trade for Birchall? Uh, 100% yes. This guy traded him a couple of weeks ago. He's been raving about it since, making me do it this week. But... Look, we did say before, where are my notes? Here they are. Um, as I said before, ranked third in the AFL for marks per game, ranked seventh for time spent on ground, and ranked ninth in kicks per game, and that totally obliterates any other defender currently in the competition. Yep. He is killing it in all of those key areas, those lucrative areas where you're going to score a lot of points. So, Ibbotson, it may look a little untidy and unattractive, but given Fremantle's run home, and how good he's been with the football and just their ability to get the ball into his hands all the time coming out of defence. Ibbotson's your man. Get around him. Get on him. How about you, Henry? Um, I got a tweet from Nick Willox. He's asking, I, can I trade out Dwyer? I, I can trade out Dwyer and get any mid except Griffin. Mm. I already have Ablett, Cochin, Lids and Pendles. Who should I get? Watson. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Um, Are you sure after last jo- Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Joe Watson, Dane Swan, Michael Barlow, or Joel Selwood? Who They're, would you pick? On price, Joel Selwood. Scoring wise, Watson. <laughs> well, Watson had a Watson. massive break even uh, in the game before his buy. It was 200 or something like that, and he went down massively in price. So yep. yeah. now's the time to get him, I think. He yeah. dropped it like it was hot. Yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about you? Um, I've got a tweet from Preston Towers. He's mm-hmm. saying, should I trade uh, Boston and McCaffrey for Bartel and Danaher? I think that's two excellent trades right there. McCaffrey obviously topped out. He's got that high break even. Mm-hmm. And Boston, there's the uncertainty around it. Yep. Yep. And Danaher, well, he's a cheap forward rookie that's scoring well. And Bartel, get on in. What yeah, more can you know. say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and just quickly, captain choices for the weekend. We've got all of our premium players I back. I miss Gary so much. <laughs> yeah. That little bald-headed still don't little have man. I still don't have I that just, you. I'm, yeah. I'm cheap. You are. There's, um, there's worse words than that. Who are Conwood playing on the weekend? Port Adelaide. Okay. Over there. Pendles is my choice. Pendles? Pendles is a good one. We're playing Saturday afternoon. Yep. So... I don't use the loophole crap. Loop. So. Well, Ooh. I do. Yeah. I trust Shun. my gut. What's Shun? Alright, you're going with Ablett? I'm going Ablett. Yep. I'm going Watson Loophole and Ablett. Mm-hmm. Yep, I'm going Nick Nat Loophole into Ablett. Weak. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Jealousy. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, um, that wraps up another episode of the SCP Show. Now, make sure you do get across to our friends at UncleRico.com. Uh, awesome Melbourne brand. Uh, support local guys they are awesome i love their t-shirts and you'll love them too so we'll catch you next week i'm Paige, and go pies go tigers go bombers and go the days hey the D and go the lions